Good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is O.P. Yadav, Editor-in-Chief of Indian Journal of Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgery and CEO of National Heart Institute in Delhi. We are privileged to have Professor Pomer, if I can get the name and pronunciation right, yes. Jose Luis Pomer. Perfect. <laughs> the past president of EACTS and currently chief of cardiac surgery at Barcelona University Hospital. Welcome, Dr. Pomer. Thank you very much. Dr. Big Pomer, pleasure. the heart failure epidemic seems not to be relenting. And we as cardiac surgeons are called upon to handle the, 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 the negative remodeling side effects of mitral regurgitation. So the point that I want to ask you is that is the mitral valve truly normal in functional MR? I think we all thought it was not the problem. The problem was the ventricle and was just a, a geometrical issue, uh, dilatation of the annulus, tethering, but the valve was completely normal. Yeah. Today we know it is not normal. In okay. fact, we don't know exactly the mechanisms, but we know there is uh, an issue with uh, uh, adaptation of the, the, the same tissue to the changes in the geometry. For instance, okay. metalloproteinases and uh, uh, tissue growing factors, they act on the, tip, on, the, on the leaflets, and we learn that they are modifying the structure. So it's not completely normal valve, as we can see. Okay, and now in the various factors that we know interplaying in a, in a functional MR, the so-called tethering of the valve, the tenting of the valve, the papillary muscle displacement, annular dilatation, is there something like which is the most dominant uh, pathogenetic factor? Uh, Again, this is not easy to say. I mean, uh, people like uh, Bob Levine in, in the U.S., he was doing a lot of work and everything. What it was clear that the, the changes in the architecture of the mitral valve, at the end, what it happens is that there is a lack of coaptation and there is producing the MR. Which one of the factors, the dilatation probably is not the most important because some cases they don't really have a big dilatation. Sure. Uh, but of course, the, these are uh, uh, alignment of the, 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 the subabular apparatus. This is playing probably a more important role. Okay, and it varies probably from patient to patient. Yeah, yeah. So it's how changing. do you choose your patient uh, for surgery? You know, all mitral regurgitations won't need intervention. So is there any uh, cutoff in terms of, you know, parameters, biochemical or echocardiography parameters which would help in deciding which patient should go in for surgical intervention? Yeah, uh, we have to say that um, uh, in our practice in Spain, uh, today most of the cities, they have a good uh, primary, primary PCI for patients with myocardial infarction. So the number of uh, aneurysms has decreased, decreased very importantly. And uh, in consequence, the number of MRs also is a little bit lower. Uh, we know now that uh, it's a very important factor for survival at long-term survival to have an MR or not. So I think we need to be aware of that. And the cardiologists, which before they were not very keen on on um, structural or mitral or aortic, now they want to, do, to be involved. In our practice, we do a group of uh, cardiologists and surgeons, and we discuss very uh, openly the patients that require something to be done. Okay. Usually, if the patient has a very bad left ventricular uh, function, what we start with, uh, uh, and is well vascularized and everything, uh, with a resynchro, mm -hmm. and very often they improve enough as to have surgery safer than, than if they have a very bad function. So we are selecting more or less the patients, and then we go to a, a mitral or if needed, a ventricular surgery. So is that a decision, shall I ask you, is it that we are now beginning to operate them early in the course, or is it Absolutely. late in the I course? Absolutely. I think one of the, th uh, probably one of the most important things we have seen with all these last trials trying to show the differences between 
repair and replacement yeah. is that if you wait too much, then you lose a lot. So probably you need to be an expert surgeon. That's important to have uh, a specific centers, not for everybody, to do it in a good center and to do it early, not too late, when the ventricle is already dilated. And if we remember the studies in Leiden, for instance, where they were having 65 or 11 ventricular and diastolic dimension yeah. as a cutoff, uh, we can understand that if we do it early so the ventricle is not too dilated, probably there will be a reverse remodeling and the patient will be much better. So is there any hardcore evidence and data for, uh, you know, mortality and survival benefit following MR or is it just uh, improvement of quality of life? Uh, that's again a good question because uh, what, what seems to be clear is that a number of patients benefit of surgery. Uh, all these studies done uh, in Ann Arbor or Leiden and so, they showed that it's true that 30 or 35 percent of the patients have a recurrence of the MR and then they have again a, a higher risk of mortality later. But there is a group of patients who benefit of that. So the important probably thing is to select patients who can benefit and not the others. Even for a valve replacement or for a valve repair. Because even if there is more recurrence at one year, and I understand this short time, but at one year, the, uh, the outcomes are the same for repair and replacement. So probably the most important thing is not the technique itself, but when you do it. When you do it and, and not this the is, technique. I think it's very important to do it early. Okay, okay. And uh, do you have any thoughts going forwards? Do you think this is one field which will be taken up by the cardiologists through percutaneous interventions? Uh, it's, it's already done. Uh, it's they, already done. Uh, the mitral clip, no doubt, there is more than 40, 45,000 already implanted. And in some group of patients, they have been able to show a benefit, especially in functional MR. Uh, also, there is many attempts of uh, having different types of uh, annuloplasties. Annuloplasties, some of them, they are uh, intended to be even uh, not only undersizing the, the orifice, but also yeah. able to do it even smaller from outside with radio frequency or other systems. So uh, I think they, everybody tries to get there. And because, as you mentioned, uh, heart failure is a ep big epidemic and it's increasing and increasing and the number of MRs is going to increase for sure. And as for the surgeon, we have been torn between the different and innumerable number of annuloplasty rings. So if I were to ask you a very basic question, do you think a planar annuloplasty ring is good enough or we need a saddle shaped and this and that shaped rings? Uh, I, I think you don't need so. I mean, it is nice, but I don't think anybody has been able to demonstrate that there is a big difference. Okay. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, some people in some countries, they still use rings like the first Carpentier for rheumatics uh, for the same purpose and they claim it's doing well and at the same time people who is a, an expert on on this type of surgery they have been moving from the uh, physio 2 back to the physio 1 because the PA is shorter or smaller and then they were getting more uh, surface of coaptation so but I don't think this is going to be a the big issue. So ladies and gentlemen, we just heard Professor Poma, there's so much of heterogeneity in heart failure remodeling that one stop solution does not exist. And one needs to intervene with a panoply of, 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 of techniques, all have to be customized and suited and targeted to an individual patient that it is better to intervene early rather than late and going forwards, probably percutaneous therapies are going to be the way forwards. Well, thanks a lot, Professor Poma, for being Thank you. with us. And Thank you. I appreciate big, your thoughts. Big pleasure. It's always and a pleasure. And have a great stay in India. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.